Cricket from the Coat Hangers, and you're listening to Drop the Mic. Take care of his own problems. One to one problem, yes. Five to one problem. Too much ask any one. Is that what's bothering you? The odds. Well, we can fix that. You like matching, Mr. Lawrence? Yes, Sensei! Uh, no more fighting. This is a karate dojo, not a knitting class. You don't come in my dojo and drop a challenge and leave, old man. If you get your boy in the meta, you and I will have a major problem. Too much advantage. Your dojo. Name it, please. Turn up. <laughs> You've got real nerve, old man. Real nerve. But I think we can accommodate you. Can't we, Mr. Lawrence? Yes, Sensei. All in. Ask one more small request. Make it fast. Ask leave boy alone to train. You're a pushy little bastard, ain't you? Hey there, and welcome back to San Diego's own pop culture podcast. We are your hosts, Diego Luna, James Warney, and Wesley Swanson. This is episode 108, Wax On, Wax Off. So what's up, guys? Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. On this uh, thank you, guys. On the... The listeners, the listeners who are yes. joining us today. This is uh, Diego's pick. Yeah, it is my pick. Yes, and it uh, it was too sweet. <laughs> Just getting started. I know, I know. But uh, yeah, episode one hundred eight. Tonight we are chatting about the uh, classic eighties flick, The Karate Kid, starring Pat Morita and Ralph Macchio. Macchio. <laughs> Macchio. What but, about William Sapner, bruh? It's true. Well, you just dropped them right now. That's what I thought. Oh, you need, you need the real karate know, kid. Let- <laughs> the real karate kid. I was letting you uh, do the honors. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that legend. The legend. <laughs> the real karate kid. And now for a special news report. Brought to you by Drop the Mic. All right, James, what do you got on the news? All right, uh, so Shazam is reportedly doing so good that it has been greenlit for a second film already. All right, nice. um, With uh, Zachary Levi and all the kids coming back um, to, to to be in the cast again. So look forward to that. I haven't seen it yet. Did um, you guys already see it? I haven't oh, seen it yet. Did you see it already? I haven't seen um, uh, Shazam. I'm, I'm I am, working uh, on that. I, uh, I can't believe you haven't seen yeah, it, man. I just have been so you. been so busy. I don't have time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, what else do we got? So um, there was a rumor going around that Idris Elba was going to be, or not really a rumor, but the news was Idris Elba was replacing Will Smith as uh, Deadshot. Mm-hmm. That has since been uh, debunked, I guess, as Whoa. he will be playing. Uh, Another character named Bronze Tiger. He's another character, uh, villain. Um, so he'll be a part of the Suicide Squad. I guess maybe this is kind of leaving the door open for Will Smith to return in future franchises mm-hmm. and not being uh, completely erased from the from the film. Um, also, with some Suicide Squad news, um, Peter uh, Safran, I think it was, or s- something like that. Um, he's a producer for WB. He stated that the Suicide Squad is this new one that James Gunn is directing is not a sequel, or uh, it is actually a reboot. Um, 
That's why it's called The Suicide Squad, to kind of erase what happened from the first one. Really? But along with that news, he also, <laughs> they also said Viola Davis will be returning as Amanda Waller, Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg, Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang, and Margot Robbie as uh, Harley Quinn. So I don't understand so how this is a reboot so if the, all of these characters are still coming back as the characters they already were. So it's like a soft reset? I, that's what was confusing me because the guy was like, it's not a, it's not, um, a sequel, it's a reboot. Mm. He's like, don't get confused, it's not a part two. It's a requel. Yeah, whatever. Hey. Whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> confusing ass news for that. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's a sequel. But um, for me, if, it, if all these people are coming back as the same characters, it's a sequel. It is. I don't even know what the fuck they're, thinking, they're talking about. Because he wanted to confirm and tell everybody this isn't a sequel, this is a reboot. That's cool. Don't bullshit. get confused, that's why it's called The Suicide Squad. Well, it's, it's kind of like um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. So Fincher did his American version, and then um, uh, Fede Alvarez, the guy who did the Evil yeah. Dead remake did the, this newer one that just came out was it the, the girl who kicked uh, the girl in the spider's web yeah he recasted everyone mm-hmm. to tell his own story to put his own spin on it so it, he didn't want to touch Fincher's work yeah so maybe that's what he's what uh, you know they don't want to touch a- what Ayer did because it's not going to be his vision anymore so since, so since it's um, uh, Gun. I guess Gun's picking the characters that he most wants to bring back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe it, that's what they mean by it is that it's gonna have a f- like kind of a fresher take. It, don't expect to see Ayer's kind of style. Yeah, I guess maybe. I don't Makes know. Makes sense. Uh, what else do we got? So The Rock on Instagram had uh, he went on saying that he was super excited how good Shazam's doing across the world because um, he is a producer of that movie. Oh. And um, oh, Black Adam. Man. Yeah, and then, and then he also said that, "Don't worry, Black Adam is coming, and the heroes are in for a, a world of hurt." Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, so he said, "Starting, uh, they're gonna start filming next year. So within a year, they're gonna be. Uh, we're gonna probably gonna see some Rock as the as Black Adam." What do you guys think about the Rock as Black Adam? I think well he's been casted as Black Adam for like six years now six years something like that since like I mean well, I before before even Shazam was even talked about they had said oh we're doing a Shazam we're doing a Black Adam movie and they're like why are you doing a Black Adam movie without Shazam <laughs> yeah. and then like two years later they're like oh we're doing Shazam. a Shazam movie we're casting for it now so I don't know but uh, that's happening well, um Hopefully it doesn't suck, bro. No. Because, I mean, DC's kind of uh, getting some steam with all this. They're getting the groove. Movie, yeah. They're finding their little spot. Um, what else do I have? Also, oh, Disney had some interesting news at CinemaCon that they stated that all the, the titles and franchises that they had acquired from Fox, don't worry, we're going to be making... We're going to continue those stories, such as um, Alien... Planet of the Apes and uh, Kingsman. So those franchises will continue. Um, so Hulk be ready for more. Ours? Yeah, probably. All right, all right. Yeah. So I think they're that basically that's what they were saying. Nothing's really going to change for those. They're still going to be under the Fox banner. Yeah. But um, uh, so just don't worry about it. I guess. Cool. Um, what else do I got? Oh, Netflix is actually in talks to acquire the famous Hollywood landmark, the Egyptian Theater. Yeah, that was part of my news. Oh, Ooh, sorry. Ooh. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, what, um, what they're doing with this? I don't think I've ever been to the Egyptian, but I mean, uh, that's nuts. Uh, when I read that, I, I, was, I was very intrigued. Although I did hear that they're not planning on doing any kind of chain thing where everybody will get a Netflix theater in their city. Yeah. So this is kind of just a one and done for now. And there's a bunch of legal stuff with the property and everything that they're having troubles with. So nothing's definitely like in the final stages. But if they do get it, that's pretty crazy. Since everybody seems to think that Netflix is the future of cinema. <laughs> It's ironic that they would buy an historic landmark theater. Yeah. 
pretty weird. Um, yeah, what do you think? I mean, it's I, crazy them buying a theater. I mean, they're in the streaming service. I feel that this is their attempt to kind of get into the movie theater business. I feel um, this is uh, another revenue stream. Ne- yeah, and I think this is this is smart. This is smart business. I'll tell you why. Because they could do a screening of a movie for a week or two, mm-hmm. and then before it hits their ne- their streaming service, right? Or they could just release exclusive content just for the. Yeah. for that theater and you only come and watch it there and then it makes it um, uh, eligible for Oscars yeah. yes so then they have that as a platform to kind of get their stuff like out so it's kind of like a loopy loop, yeah. like a loop into like getting into uh, the Academy Awards and shit like that so yeah. um, so moving on to my next bit of news uh, Will Ferrell and Adam McKay are no longer partnering up as producers um no real reason on why the sudden separation but they kind of announced it that they're separating and going their own ways and they they're in charge of doing like Talladega, Talladega Nights and Step Brothers and everything that was good is because of Adam McKay and, uh, some speculation is is uh people are saying that it's due to the fact that Adam McKay saw what Holmes and Watson was <laughs> And was kind of like, oh, this is shit. I can't be associated with Will anymore. Um, <laughs> that's that's legit. Speculate. People are speculating on the reason why doubt. you kind of. I wouldn't doubt it, bro. How do you feel? I know Wes has stated this uh, numerous amount of times that Will's kind of uh, uh, his star meters kind of dropped, um, uh, or at least his his production in in movies yeah. isn't really what it used to be. I feel the same way, like um, like Happy Happy Madison. I feel the same way. These two producers are, are, are going through the same thing, mm-hmm. where it's not producing, it's not making the magic that they used to have. It's because they, I feel like they're not hungry anymore, so they're just kind of cranking out this whatever material because they can. Yeah. They're, they're they're comfortable. They don't have. They don't need to make a good movie, and that's the same thing. Like you said with Adam Sandler, he doesn't need to make good stuff. Yeah. So he's just putting stuff out there just to put it out there, and um, yeah, I think fucking uh, Will Ferrell has been kind of, uh, you know, out of his prime for a while. Mm-hmm. As far as far as acting, you know, I, I respect his production company and, yeah. and everything they've done I know they do the the drunk history stuff and a bunch of really cool stuff but as far as acting I don't know it's like they try to do this like slapsticky stuff that's just not relevant anymore in my opinion as yeah. far as what the comedy the kind of comedy I like and uh, and yeah I don't know um, what, do, what do you think of no that? I think that's I think it's crazy I I would agree in most of the stuff. I haven't seen Holmes and Watson. Um, to me, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that looks pretty funny. But then, looking at the trailer more, it's uh, the other, I think there's like two more trailers after that. And it was like, oh, this is, I, I feel like a lot of their stuff now is just, uh, what a lot of comedy movies do is they, they throw all their funniest jokes out in the trailer yeah. to get the attention. Yeah. And then everything is like, okay jokes for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I thought. I think some of his stuff. I thought. Uh, what's it called? The movie with uh, the other guys. Well, that was a good one. Oh yeah, I actually like that Mark, one. Mark Wahlberg and the other one that he did with uh, with Mark, uh, Daddy's Home or okay. Daddy's, Dad's yeah. Home. Yeah, whatever. Daddy's Home. Yeah. I mean, those. those honestly, I've, I've seen those, and those are fucking hilarious. But dude. I also think that's Mark Wahlberg too. Yeah. I He's think Mark bring Wahlberg brings brings a different dynamic to to that character just like Kevin Hart when he did that mm-hmm. movie um, Get Hard with Kevin yeah. Hart Kevin Hart comes kind of more the comedic mm-hmm. than Will Ferrell mm-hmm. was and shit and I think Will Ferrell played off um, Kevin Hart a lot a lot more better I think yeah I think it's just Will Ferrell needs the right material yeah, yeah. you know what I mean there's mm-hmm. a lot of actors who you think they suck but it's just because you're not getting the right material to show you what they can do yeah, and so that's unfortunately the case. And they run their course, bro. Like just like everything, everything runs their course. Everything. If you are, pro- if you guys aren't producing the right content, 
and it's time to move on to different projects. Mm -hmm. And possibly, maybe later in the future, come back and do something badass.